Greetings, y'all. This is Daniel, and this is a quick extra tutorial on all the new hotness that's available in the Camtasia 2022 library. You've got a brand new library this go round that includes some really interesting elements, some of which offer functionality we've never seen in the library before. So let's hop to it. Beginning at the top in audio, we've got a collection of new background music to introduce into our projects. Remember, to test something out, we don't have to add it to our timeline. You can just double click and it'll open in a preview window. Yeah, that's snappy. I like that. You can preview the duration right here to see if it'll approximate your project length. We'll close this one out and open another one. Okay, different vibe, but also very nice. And you see this one's quite a bit longer. Now, let's head over into Callouts, and it's got a few subfolders here, the first of which is Counters. Now, most of the visual assets you'll see in the library were created directly within Camtasia. For example, if I go down and insert one of these buttons, and if I open up its group, you can see that basically it's just constructed with a bunch of common shapes and text bits. But these counters appear to have an extra bit of programmatic voodoo applied that displays a count. Note that these aren't just video overlays. You know, after dragging it onto the timeline, you can change the font. You can change the color. You can change the sizing, etc. of this dynamic text. Um, there are a bunch of these, the most useful of which are probably the timestamp and countdown ones. And of course, you can drag these out to any size you want, and the actual counter will continue running according to its length. The remaining callouts are indicators, which are excellent for diagramming the parts of an image or video. These come in three flavors with text, solo, or with a divider. Let's double click a text one. So we've got an animated dot for the point of interest and a connector line and a text label. Very clean, very sexy. If I put it on my timeline, you can see that just as with most official assets, you have a set of quick properties that you can use so that you don't have to worry about dissecting the group here in order to make a few changes. For example, we can alter the text label and its characteristics. And you can change the colors of the dot and connector. Uh, this one is a three point gradient. So let's say I wanted to go from red to violet to deep blue. There, looks nice. And you've got lots of ones to experiment with. For example, here's one with both a divider and not just one, but two text fields. Sassy. Moving on from callouts, we have a channel kit with some nice animated subscribe buttons for spicing up your YouTube channel. Here's one. Ooh, let's try this like and subscribe brand glow. If I change the theme, I can see my colors and logo. The bell's a little washed out, so let's make it white. Good. The next three subfolders are all about showing off mouse cursors in all their glory. 
While perhaps not as easy to work with as the dynamic cursor effects built into the Camtasia editor, these offer a bit of sassiness for when you need to show a cursor up close to simulate some kind of cursor-specific action, for example, a double click. And you notice that there are both white and black cursors for simulating either Mac or Windows. Cursor Heroes offers some more dynamic animations for really showing off those cursors in a slightly cheeky way. Most of them are a little silly for my taste, though I do quite like the sticky exit one. Whoosh! And if you want to build your own cursor animations, Camtasia offers just about every cursor type under the sun in their detailed cursor packs. As I resize this, one thing you'll notice is that these cursors are vector-based. That means that you'll be able to infinitely resize them up or down without any loss in quality. In fact, the same can be said for pretty much all the visual assets here. Moving right along to Emphasis FX, we have several categories of little animations that will let you direct a user's attention to a specific part of the screen. They're pretty much all circular in shape and work well as accent animations that draw the eye. Expressive animations are similar with some combining with cursors. And there are also some hand-drawn shapes that serve as an alternative to sketch motion annotations. Next, we have fills and overlays a series of gradients that can serve as backgrounds on their own, or just to add a bit of color to a pre-existing background. Now there's no excuse at all to have a lame solid color background for your videos. Here in Icons and Glyphs, you've got all these sweet little animated icons. There's a ton of them in a variety of genres. By the way, you've also got a static folder in case you want one of these shapes but without the usual animation. The structures folder isn't very filled out right now. Currently it's just buildings along with a group that'll give you a nice skyline with zero effort. Now, titles are far and away one of the most useful categories. These are animated title segments and lower thirds for building out the text segments of your screencast project. You've got a bunch of these, and please also don't forget about TechSmith Assets, which offers tons more. And you don't even have to be a subscriber to download a generous amount of intros, outros, and other motion graphics. You see, these are all starter assets, what you're seeing on the screen right now, which means anyone can download them. So don't be shy. Go there. Finally, we have UIKit, which offers some basic interface elements like buttons, search fields, or a mocked-up browser window. You can even put up a device like a laptop or tablet, similar to Camtasia's device frame feature. I just remove the placeholder image and add a video or image of my own. And here's something that the device frames can't do. Right now, the content here is a little too far away, so I'm going to zoom in. I go into the group and find my content and then adjust the scale. But oops. Now it's breaking out of the frame. That's not good, but it's also not a problem. I'm just going to select this screen asset here in the group and then make a copy of it that appears over my video layer. And now I'll apply a media mat, which restricts the layer under it, in this case my video layer, to the size and shape of that screen layer. So even though that content is now zoomed, it's staying within 
the confines of the laptop screen. Well, I hope this was helpful. We're going to keep pumping out good supplementary lessons for the Camtasia certification community. So by all means, stay tuned in. If you like this, give us a like or a subscribe so that you don't miss anything coming out in the future. Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next one.